Auburn versus Alabama. Arguably the most intense rivalry in all of college football. A game that is played once a year in the Southern Enclave, but whose outcome resonates for 365 consecutive days in and around the state. A game in which your most vivid dreams collide with your worst fears. A brother versus brother battle of wills, dividing families and loyalties. Opposites, yet with so much in common. Alabama, the defending national champs, relegated to spoiler this year with a chance to ruin Auburn's dream season. Mark Ingram, the reigning Heisman winner. And Cam Newton, this year's presumptive front runner, sharing a stage. The vaunted Tide defense challenged with stopping the improbable Tiger offense. Two teams, one state, meeting for the 75th time in the game known simply as the Iron Bowl. This guy's unbelievable. You can't do this stuff. Oh my gosh! Now, fire up the crowd for the win. He got it! It is a special walk every autumn afternoon, but especially so prior to the last home game of the year. And so, the Tide Walk of Champions is made. On the left, Greg McElroy. In the middle, Heisman winner Mark Ingram. To the right, All-American wide receiver Julio Jones. Their last game at home. On the other side of the stadium, the raucous reception for Cam Newton and his Auburn Tiger teammates. Inside, amidst the sea of crimson and tide, here's Greg McElroy. Quarterback Greg McElroy from South Lake, Texas. The son of Greg and Jamie McElroy, number 12, Greg McElroy. One of several seniors introduced, having their picture taken with head coach Lou Saban, we welcome you to Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. It's Auburn and it's Alabama and it's the Iron Bowl. And here comes Alabama. Auburn Tigers. And in the middle, quarterback Cam Newton. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Daniels and Tracy Wilson. Welcome to Brian Denny. It's a simple ritual, really, in this state. At birth, you declare your allegiance. It's either Auburn or it's Alabama. Shortly thereafter, you begin a lifetime of devotion to one or the other. If you're for Auburn, you call the other guys Bammers, and you yell War Eagle. If you're for Alabama, you call the other guys Barners, and you scream Roll Tide. And along the way, just a small degree of distaste is formed for the other fellows. Other than that, it's just another Friday. That's in normal times. This is an abnormal event. The defending national champion, Alabama Crimson Tide, stands in the way and could put a huge dent in the aspirations of their most bitter rival, the Auburn Tigers. I don't know. It's got some things going for it, Gary. I think it does. Um, to be ranked number one or number two, sometimes you have the opportunity to back your way into it. Auburn is not going to be able to back their way into this. About a month ago, all the experts said that Alabama, 1-85, to their team was the best in the country. For Auburn to get there, they're going to have to go right through Alabama. Well, Cam Newton will play. Allegations remain allegations. No facts have been proven or made public. And so he will play today, despite those allegations against his father. Let's talk about Cam Newton as a football player. 
He has been able to focus on his game no matter what has been going around outside of the football field. Alabama will catch Cam Newton's A game. He's got it all. We saw him throw against Georgia. We saw him run when he has to. He is the most valuable player in college football. But to win this game, the two lines for Auburn, the offensive line, four seniors, they've been through the wars in the SEC. They must have great games. But there's some holes in the Auburn defense, and that means their star, Nick Fairley, must come through. Vern, if we're not talking about Nick Fairley as one of the stars of this football game, I just don't see how Auburn can win the game. Nick Fairley, number 90, must dominate. Well, you and I know a few Alabama fans. They all ask the same question. Can we stop Cam Newton? And if so, how do we stop him? They don't have to stop Cam Newton. They only have to stop him one more time than the other way around. Alabama's offense is going to produce points, too, because they got stars in the field. The Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram, is finally healthy. He gives them the running game along with Trent Richardson. Julio Jones has to be licking his chops. That secondary for Auburn has holes in it. But you know what? It gets right back to the quarterback. Last year, Greg McElroy produced against Auburn in that last drive and led him to a national championship. Let's see if he can do it again today against this outstanding Auburn football team. All right, Gary, right now let's go down for more to Tracy Wilson. Well, Vern, let's start with Alabama. Two key players nicked up. Running back Trent Richardson still dealing with a knee injury, not 100%. And offensive lineman Barrett Jones out with a high ankle sprain. Gary, you mentioned the importance of Auburn's defensive line. Well, Michael Goggins, Mike Blanc will miss the first half because they were ejected for throwing punches against Georgia. That's huge for depth, guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. Auburn won the toss and deferred. So Julio Jones brings it out for the Alabama Crimson Tide, and he does so to the 29-yard line. First down, 10. Mark Ingram is the running back. Greg McElroy, the senior, hitting 70% of his passes this year. McElroy on a strike. Julio Jones. Well, Greg McElroy, two year starter now, national championship a year ago, having a splendid senior season. Over his career, 66%. And in just this season, he's thrown for 17 touchdowns. One off the single season record. 23-2 and two as a starter. And you can tell the coaches trust him to start the game out with a pass like that. Second down, one. Play action. McElroy goes the other side. And that one's caught by Darius Hanks, number 15. And a little join starts right away. Let's introduce you to the Alabama offense presented by Chick Fulla. Carpenter, Warmack, Lejos, Steen starts for Barrett Jones, a senior at right guard. Fluker is back at right tackle. It's Jones, Dial, Ingram, Williams, and Darius Hanks, who just got the last pass. There's an early Wildcat. Yep, Mark Ingram is the man back. Hand off Jones, reverse. Mark Freeze Mays gets a block and back. And that's good for a first down. Let's set the defense for the Auburn Tigers. Up front, Carter, Clayton. There's Nick Fairley. Clayton drawing a lot of love from his coaches this week. The linebackers, Stevens, Bynes, and Freeman. El Toro, Freeman getting the start. Here's where they might be suspect. This is a secondary that gives up a lot of passing yardage. Second and three. Alabama on the move in the early going. Right side, Ingram. And you can see already with the different looks that Alabama has given early in this game. 
The linebackers never got a line properly on that play. Nick Fairley was handled very easily inside by D.J. Fluker. First down, 10. And they have crossed midfield. This ball uh, will be snapped at the 43. Four wide receivers, three to the left. Screen. Ingram. Another big pickup. Well, as you remember last year, it was Auburn that jumped out early with this kind of finesse. Now, I think the all Alabama staff is saying, you know what? We're not sure we can stop them. We're going to be wide open all game. Ingram not used all that often in the passing game. That's his 17th reception in this, the uh, final game of the regular season. Second down and two. Jones gets it. Goes right by the defensive end. Oh, he blew by Antoine Carter. This is the speed sweep, the fly sweep. He scored a touchdown on it. And you can see Carter said, I didn't even know he had the ball. But I tell you, there's guys all around college football now that are going, maybe I should try to break my hand. <laughs> Since Julio Jones broke that hand, he has been on a tear. Got a wonderful block out on the edge from Darius Hanks. Number 15, first down. Here comes the blitz. Roy goes deep down the middle. He's got Mays open. There's a ball tip. And we're going to have an interference call against DeMond Washington. Yeah, DeMond just did not trust his ability on that play. He had this play, but his left hand grabbed the receiver. He just kind of panicked. So he's got this all the way, but he didn't trust it. He gave a tug with his left hand before he went there with his right hand. Neither one of these pictures exactly show it, but it was pretty well seen by the back judge on that play. There's DeMond Washington, number 14, and senior that, out of Tallahassee. And that was kind of the scout Pass report. interference, number 14, defense, 15-yard penalty, for foul. The scouting report on DeMond was when he's in the slot, He's a very valuable player for them, but when he's outside on the flank, one-on-one -on, -one on a wide receiver, we think we can attack him. That was the game plan for Alabama, and they went right at him. And that is where he will be now, again, as Earl Alexander, a senior, comes uh, wide to the left. Look at the graphic. No first quarter touchdown since 96. Hand off. Now they can erase that mark. What an impressive drive to open the Iron Bowl, capped by the touchdown run of nine yards of the Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram. Extra point is coming from Jeremy Shelley, number 90. You know, the first thing that strikes me, no number 90. Nick Fairley is not there. They block down and pull around. Watch how easy it is. Fairley out of the game early. They get a good rub down. Anthony Steen subbing for Barrett Jairs. Jones blows him out. And how about that drive? Seven plays. Their quarterback is three for three. Seven nothing Alabama. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. Roll time! It's all about tailgating, flag waving, drink shaking, face painting, always and celebrating, trash talking, no mistake in sound, but a spiritual ritual, a kind of passion. say why the Iron Bowl? Well, this game was played in Birmingham seemingly forever. And of course, Birmingham known as the steel capital of the South. Matter of fact, uh, Auburn made its first trip here 
in some 99 years back in the year 2000. And they won that game, 9 0 in a drizzle. Uh, very frigid day. It was only last year, two years ago, I beg your pardon, that Alabama won in Bryant Denny Stadium against the Auburn Tigers. Auburn is 6 and 1 in Tuscaloosa going back to the 1890s. Here's the kick. Over the shoulder catch made at the 21 yard line. You made the point, Gary. There was no Nick Fairley on right. the touchdown. Run. We said we need to talk about Nick Fairley. He would be playing right here. He was not in the game. Watch him get doubled out of there. Blown right out of the play, his replacement. And we said, if we're going to talk about Nick Fairley, he has to be a snar star, not a guy walking to the locker room. Now, I wonder if that is still the problem he had from two weeks ago against Georgia when he hurt his shoulder. Uh, Tracy's all over it. You get a report as soon as she gets some information. On first down, Newton hands it off. It goes to Michael Dyer. He gets nothing. Tracy does have information. Let's get down to it. Gary, you are exactly right. Nick Fairley came off. He wasn't in a lot of pain, but it is that left shoulder that they are looking at. They did take him into the locker room, and I was confirmed by Dr. James Andrews, the renowned orthopedic surgeon for both teams here. He told me that is exactly what they're looking at in the locker room right now, guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. Second down. Newton out of the gun. Four wide receivers, three to the right. Flags. Yeah, Alabama's misaligned. Too many players on the field. Dead ball. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12 players did not leave formation within three seconds. Five yard penalty. Second down. Now Cam Newton, the starting quarterback, has erupted on the college scene. Quite candidly, both on and off the field, but on the field, he has been superb. Superb. MVP. Quarterback draw, Newton. And we'll check the Auburn offense, presented by Chick-fil-A. Offensive line has been outstanding this year. And route to 11 wins, Zimba getting his 50th start in a row today. That's an all-time Auburn record. Adams, Smith, Dyer in the backfield. Zachary, Cody Burns, a former quarterback at wideout. Cody Burns was the Auburn starter in this game two years ago when the team lost 36-0. Third and one. Fourth and two. Dante Hightower with the tackle. Boy, Hightower hits this one right in the mouth. Watch Hightower. They pull the guard. He goes right back door and makes the play. Woo! The theme for Alabama all week is it's us. It's not them. If we play our game, we will win. On fourth down, here's the senior Ryan Shoemaker. Short punt. Marquise Mays will let it bounce, and it takes a bit of an Auburn roll just inside the 20 yard line. Three and out for the vaunted Auburn offense, averaging 505 yards per game. They got eight on their first three plays. Dante Eichel. NFL on CBS, uh, single games for you tomorrow. Jacksonville Giants, the lead game early. There are two games at 4 o'clock, Miami, Oakland, or Kansas City at Seattle. It all begins with James Brown and the game. The NFL today, 12 noon Eastern on CBS. Vern, a lot of people that were picking Auburn to have a good year this year wasn't really about Cam Newton. They knew he was a good player, not that they didn't know this good of a player. It was the schedule. This is only their fourth road game of the year. The other three's combined record is 17 and 16. Everyone knew that Auburn had a very manageable schedule this year until this game. Here's McElroy rolling out, tosses it out. It's caught 
by Preston Dial. You see the H back. Trent Richardson was also on the field for the first time. And uh, down at the far end of the field, Nick Fairley has come back on. Mike Goggins and Mike Blank, the Blanc rather, are sitting out the first half of this game because they were involved in fist fights at the end of the last game. So by SEC rule, they are out until the third quarter. Here's Nick Fairley, and he is back on the Auburn side. Yeah, that's the one game that maybe the bye didn't pay off. Yes. Oh, uh, uh -oh, he's got uh -oh. it wide open. Julio Jones, no flags, 68-yard touchdown. I think something was mentioned earlier about the Auburn secondary being susceptible. Yep. Shelley with the extra point. We are not yet through one half of the first quarter. Bert, I, I don't even have an explanation for this one. There's no play action pass here. This is pass all the way. Watch the two safeties here. They never move. There's no play action pass. I don't get it. They just stand there. And they let the best player in the country at a wide receiver position, arguably one of the top three, run right by him. Got a sports fan on your gift list? CBSSports.com shop has officially licensed NCAA gear from over 500 schools and get three-day shipping on every order. Go to shop.cbssports.com. 68-yard touchdown strike. DeMond Washington is back to return. So also is Ontario McCaleb. 14-nothing. And Julio Jones has tied D.J. Hall for the most receptions in a single season at 67. Washington. At the 33-yard line. Flag down. Tom Ritter is our uh, referee today. Offside, number 19 of the kicking team. That five yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. First down. Now Gene Chizik in his second year as a head coach at Auburn and deficits not uncommon to this team four and two when trading by ten points or more under Chiswick it's happened three times this year including in their last outing when they trailed Georgia 21 7 and just a flip flop the last year remember in this game it was Auburn that was ahead 14 and nothing and Alabama fought back here's Newton well there's stop number one and guess who? Marcel Darius. Darius is lined up at defensive end right there, and he's got to stay and play the quarterback. You can let everything else happen for Auburn. Anybody else can beat you if you're Alabama. If you're a defensive lineman, you do not run past number two. Newton with a lot of time, now he has no time. Courtney Upshaw. He went right through Lee Zimba that's that time. That's a veteran tackle who has been in the wars for a long time. Left side, way out here. Comes out of the screen and back in the screen. 
Alabama defense is on go, aren't they? Third and 24. Screen pass. Oh, we had some gator arms. Well, Mark Barron was all over that play. Bert, I, I've been coming here, you know, what, five years. I have never heard it this loud. I mean, as fired up as the Alabama football team is, I think the crowd's more fired up. Well, the expansion this past offseason increased capacity here to 101,000 plus. You can imagine that it is filled beyond capacity today. Here is the punt. Second time for Auburn, three and out. We'll see if Nick Fairley comes out here because he's been out for three plays. Alabama has scored two touchdowns. Nick Fairley back on the field for the Auburn Tigers. Injured two weeks ago against Georgia. Yes, uh, Aaron Murray was scrambling on a play, and Nick Fairley was coming across the play, goes over the top of him, and that's the play he hurt his shoulder on. Had to leave the field afterwards, and then early in this football game, we think we found Fluker is blocking down on Fairley. I think Zach Clayton, his teammate, comes across and hits him again, and that's what re-injured or re-aggravated that shoulder injury. And he is back on the field now. Fairly with 18 tackles for loss, first in the SEC. Tied for third with seven and a half. And uh, has been accused by a couple of coaches in this league of overly aggressive play at that defensive line position. Gene Chiswick says, we don't coach it that way. We don't teach it that way. He doesn't play it. That way. That's a summation. Here's McElroy. What a start for him and for Julio Jones. Craig Stevens makes the tackle, but I think Julio might have leaned out and got you dead. A first down. Well, you know, when we were talking in the open burn about Julio Jones licking his chops, this is why Auburn has been susceptible to these great big receivers in this league. You talk about the guys that earn their earn their yardage in this league. I almost said earn did their you, money. You did almost I, say I know, that. I, didn't I, you? I, well, I tried not to say it, but it was out there. <laughs> well, Dr. Floyd, <laughs> it's good to have you here. All right. Well, let's go to the numbers. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Here's the three guys. I'm going to get it for that one, aren't I? Oh. You look at the big receivers in this league and there's four great ones in my mind of course Randall Cobb also from Kentucky but Alshon Jeffrey look at the stats against Auburn Jones so far you know just so far and they're not going to stop throwing to this guy no 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 second and seven we near the six minute mark Alabama has not been stopped look at that averaging almost 14 yards per play comes inside it's Julio again. It, it, it's a it's such a mismatch out there. But Demond Washington is about 5'9". When you list a guy in college at 5'9", that means he's usually 5'8". And Julio Jones is 6'4", 6'5". It's just a tough match for Mr. Washington. Now Julio Jones is going to get a rest. And Earl Alexander, number 82, is out. McElroy, what a start for the senior. 7 of 7 for 124 yards. See the Auburn defense 100 out of 120 Division I teams. Richardson. Richardson uh, twisted a knee a couple of weeks ago against LSU on a goal line play, and he has not played the last two games. Not 100%, but able to get out there and compete. Yeah, I thought he, I, I saw him in practice. I thought he looked good in practice on Wednesday, I guess it was. Everything was kind of cockeyed here because of the holidays. Darius Hanks goes wide. Uh, a little confusion. And Alabama is going to have to call timeout. That's their first. 
the Iron Bowl from Tuscaloosa. It's been all Crimson Tide so far. Now you can see the uh, complete bowl here. The addition to your left, that's the second deck on the south end. And uh, I think that it has made this one of the most beautifully symmetrical football stadiums in the country. It's uh, become an aesthetic delight, and the volume of noise can well, make it a tough place to Alabama play. might but not win the championship in football. They're going to win it in, ten, in attendance for the first time in 37 years. They're going to knock off Tennessee, averaging 101,821 this year, number four in the country. In the, in, in the C, SEC, here's Trent Richardson in at the Wildcat spot, and he picks up one. So the first third and long now for Alabama. And now this is when the front four, this is the green light spot that coaches talked about, that front four for Auburn. They have been making a difference fairly. The defensive ends, they've been able to put pressure on the quarterback. Let's see if they can do it in third and eight. They must put pressure on McElroy. Two receivers right. That's Darius Hanks who starts in motion, now comes back, number 15. Blitz. Roy got him. Nick Fairley telling you he doesn't do it. Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get a celebration penalty. He has been targeted. And, and Vern, they would have thrown this on anybody, though. Yep. He made a tremendous play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 90, defense, 15 yard penalty, fourth down. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't it's think not, so. Uh, it's still not a first down, though. It's about what, fourth and four or something like that? Fourth and five. Yeah. Well, I'm not so sure about the excessive nature no, of that. No, I, I thought that was a pretty good play. Yeah. I, th I thought he was. It's right on the hairline, though. But he's got a spotlight on his forehead. Yeah, you're probably right. Fourth down. Fourth and four. McElroy, nobody open. Hinsey lets it go. It is caught. Marquise Mays. Boy, at that time, McElroy went to about his fourth receiver on the play. He was looking to the right all the way. And when he started to run, the defensive back went to him on the play. Went to the quarterback. And there's the throw. Let's see. You only need one foot, remember? Yes, he got it. I think it was Nico Thorpe that left the receiver and went for the scrambling McElroy, and that's when McElroy made the throw. On first down, handoff. Tackle at the line of scrimmage. Trent Richardson. And this was El Toro Freeman, number 21, who's getting a start at linebacker today. It's a really fine line now for Gene Chiswick with Nick Fairley. He doesn't want Nick Fairley to lose his aggressiveness because he needs him to get those sacks. So he had to talk to him. He had to say, play smart, play aggressive, but play smart. He can't have him slow down. Second down. Ingram back in. Quick set up inside Julio Jones. First down at the 12 yard line. Nico Thorpe, number 11. McElroy is nine for nine. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, tries the bear look this time. And that time it was Zach Clayton, number 98, that got in there with the pressure. But on a three-step drop, and number eight to the outside, that's almost a gimme. Julio Jones, five catches, 108 yards, first down, 10. McElroy has Hanks, touchdown! Alabama, Darius Hanks.
Kelly with the extra point. Right from the snap, Greg McElroy didn't have to be an Oxford candidate to know there was nobody back here. He had a touchdown in his mind right at the snap. Hanks one-on-one, -on -one, nobody back there. Nico Thorpe could not handle that route. 10 for 10 for the quarterback, 21-0 for Alabama. Twenty-one zip. McElroy, ten for ten. And let's think back. Remember, Nick Fairley had the sack, would have produced the punt. He gets up, gets called for the unsportsmanlike conduct, gets a 15-yard penalty. Alabama hits the fourth down play, and then the pass to make it 21 to nothing. Greg McElroy has started this game out ten for ten. 156 yards thrown in the first quarter. Well, Gary referenced the Oxford situation. Greg McElroy was a finalist, one of 12 in this region for a Rhodes Scholarship. He was informed last Saturday that he did not get the Rhodes, but uh, not yeah. on his mind right now. That fumble against LSU cost him, I think. <laughs> Guy had some ties to the football. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're told it went to the two in this area. It went to a Harvard grad and a Naval Academy grad. Here's the kickoff. This will be Washington, near side. Not much. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Burn in the backyard brawl. West Virginia's Geno Smith had three touchdown passes. Here's one of them to Tavon Austin. 35-13 the final. The win opens the door for UConn to control its destiny in the Big East. But should they lose one of their two remaining games, the Mountaineers need only beat Rutgers next week for the Big East title. Back to you. All right, Tim. Just off the top of my head, I know that this Auburn team was down to Clemson. No, this is the biggest test for Yeah, here. I'm yeah, trying to right. say what the others were. 17, 14, and 13. Well, Auburn has scored in 21 consecutive quarters. Last time without points was the third at Kentucky. They won that on a last second field goal they're, following. They're going to have to hurry up, aren't they? <laughs> yep. Option. Ontario McCaleb, step on. Now, do you think Kirby Smart has this defensive group ready? Well, they've had two. Saban. This was the whole matchup of this game. Right. Alabama, Nick Saban and Kirby Smart had two weeks, ten game tapes, and a whole year of hearing about Cam Newton to get ready for this game. Got Smalls on. The unstoppable spread. You knew they were eager to show that this defensive game plan could stop them. And I have to say, watching tapes burn, no one's close in the SEC. This is the best tackling defense in the SEC. Let's Newton. Still can't get away. That's advisable. Tackling from behind. Will Lowry got him. Yeah, Marcel Darius, though, put a big pressure on Cam Newton first. See if you can see inside. C.J. Mosley came inside. Darius got his hand on him, and Will Lowry got the cleanup. Third three and out for the Auburn Tigers. And the numbers for Cam Newton in the first quarter as we come to a close. Zero for one throwing. Five carries for minus six yards. It has been all Alabama. That's the end of the first with a score remarkably 21 to nothing. We'll return to Brian Denny after this message and a word from your local station. Indeed, 
touchdown Alabama Eli Gold the radio announcer for the Crimson Tide there have been two more beyond that and as we start the second here at Brian Denny 21 to nothing and Marquise Mays getting ready to return the punt of Ryan Shoemaker 3-3 and out for the Tigers of Auburn Shoemaker's first punt 48 yards This is Mays at the 28, avoids the first man. Flag is down, he's not going right. Slips another tackle and is out of bounds up near the 40, but I believe this is gonna go against Alabama. Looks like uh, there might be an illegal block in the back on the near side. Does not appear Saban is happy. Took a penalty to get him to his yeah. <laughs> outlook turned the wrong way there, didn't right. it? During the return, illegal block in the back, number 24, the receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. All right, we start the second. Vern, Gary, Tracy's down on the sideline. I give you your choice. Flip a coin. <laughs> Alabama offense, Alabama defense. I know. Uh, it, it went, and everybody has said, when people who watch tape of Alabama has said, they're the most complete team. They have not produced. If you talk to all their players and their coaching staff, they just said, we have not played a full game of football this year. Well, they haven't played a full game yet in this game, but the first quarter has been spectacular. And now Auburn, if they're going to come back, Cam Newton is going to win the high. Might as well just vote right after this game. If they come back. If they yes. come back, you don't have to wait any longer. They have some trail yep. to trot before that happens. Here's Hanks. Darius Hanks out on the edge on the right side. And uh, he picks up a few to the 29. See, the problem that Auburn has against Alabama is this offense is not the offense they faced a year ago. Offense a year ago, they felt that they could shut down. And Greg Stevens, their linebacker, said it. We felt if we could shut down Ingram, we could shut down their offense. This offense is much more diverse and way more weapons. Here's a toss to Ingram. You know, Mark, uh, Mark Ingram was among those who said to us yesterday, we have not played a complete game. And uh, was looking forward to this one. He actually has a little motivation to play well in this one, despite the Heisman that he won a year ago. In the Iron Bowl, he was held to 30 yards. Right. And it's been, I, by all measures, all standards, a disappointing season for Ingram. He sat out the first two year, uh, games. Having had knee surgery. Look at the quick huddle here for Alabama. They're right yeah. up close. Jones goes to the right side, and uh, McElroy is split wide left. Please throw him the ball. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. No, never. Out of the Wildcat, Ingram. First down at the 30. Well, Mark Ingram had that huge, huge game against South Carolina a year ago. That was uh, the spark for his mark of 100, 1,148 at this point a year ago. And then uh, this season has been limited to 780. He had two big games when he first came back from the injury. But uh, nothing monstrous in the way of accumulated yards for the rest of the year. Well, it seems like Alabama didn't show any of this against Georgia State. I just don't understand. <laughs> oh, McElroy won. Get down. The most underrated part of his game is his ability to sense pressure, scramble, and make plays. Not. You know, game-changing plays, but chain-moving plays. We saw it in the SEC championship game against Florida when he made those plays. Well, take a look at him. He's probably not going to have no. a career in the National No, but it could be your boss someday. He's going to own one. <laughs> There's no doubt, and that's his aspiration. If it goes through the end zone. Either way. Yep, touchback. Touchback, yes. That was punched from behind, too. That's only the second lost fumble in Mark Ingram's 
career second. Antoine Carter, number 45, he's right here. Watch him chase this play down. 50 yards, he doesn't give up on this play. He knows he can't catch him, and he punches him from behind with his arm and rips the ball up, goes through the back of the end zone. His right hand from behind, that's the kind of hustle from Carter on the play. The senior hustling downfield, probably never in his wildest dreams did he think he could catch him, but he ended up making a play to, to maybe save the game for Auburn. Mark Ingram lost one last year. He fumbled another in 08. There you have it, 613 touches for the Crimson Tide. That's only his second lost fumble. <clears throat> Tonight, Dave welcomes Denzel Washington, plus music from John Bon Jovi. Then catch the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson only, CBS. Now see if uh, Auburn can find a spark in the touchback after the fumble by Mark Ingram. They have shown nada on offense so far. Matter of fact, they're in negative territory. Minus seven total yards of offense. Here's a flip. Is that a forward pass or that is? Look, incomplete. Vern against Georgia, Cam had a great throwing game, but he got away with a couple of things. Now watch his footwork on a short pass. That's no big deal. But later in the game, he had some success. Watch his off-balance throws. He kind of takes his feet and then just never goes through the throw. He lets it go. There's the flip a little high, but it's caught by Zachary. They're still looking for their first first down in the ball game. He doesn't really go through with the throw and a couple times in that game against Georgia. He has to be very careful that he doesn't get into a rhythm of not throwing in balance against this Alabama defense. Third and one. 21 nothing Alabama. Newton. He does get to move the chain but uh, pretty good defensive effort by with Alabama front four. Here's a stat for you. Against Georgia two weeks ago, Auburn made 10 third down conversions. All 10 were by rushes by Cam Newton. Now they got one in this game, and it came from Newton. Handoff, Michael Dyer. And he's out to the 35. Luther Davis, number 96. Made that stop. So what do you do if you're Auburn? You got shocked, you got slapped in the face, and you're still facing a very solid defense. Two weeks ready for you. You just got to do it slowly, one first down at a time. Reverse. Zachary. Everybody stayed at home for the Crimson Tide. Luther Davis is there. Gentry is there. And it's a loss on the play. Well, I'll tell you, it's like this Alabama defense. Not only are they beating the offensive line up front, it seems like they're in the huddle half the time. I mean, they're doing more than just making piles up front. That defensive line for Alabama is winning against these seniors for Auburn. Newton, pressure, finds a man open, and he drops it. Darrell Zachary had it right in his hands with at least 10 yards of open space around it. I tell you, Cam Newton dodges the blitzing. I think it's Lester that was blitzed, and then he throws a jump pass. Look at the jump pass right there. Just going the other way against the momentum of Zachary, and he drops the ball. Ryan Shoemaker is on to punt. Marquise Mays. He, he would have made a first down, yeah, too. There was sure no one there. Short punt. That punt very, barely made a first down. Twenty-one yards on the punt. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue 
pass this word to your local station. And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, the Alabama quarterback's tool for throwing this football has been extremely sharp. He's got a great matchup. He had some breakdowns in the secondary for Auburn, but when he's need to put it there, he has put it exactly where it had to go. How about starting out this game? One guy's going for the Heisman. The other guy has a national championship. But right now, Greg McElroy is bowling a 300 game. <laughs> 12 for 12. 12 strikes. That's a 300. You get a 300 pin for that in bowling, right? Yes. Yeah. It, 12 for 12. Yeah. He could have been on the bowling for all the <laughs> show. Grew up in Texas. You Greg McElroy. Gee, remember? A you didn't year have ago? to go there. I was just. No, was I know, but, you know, I got you on the. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. <laughs> Richardson. A few yards. This Auburn defense now, they're looking up and they're saying, we've got to get a stop. We must get a stop. Ted Roof has had good, the defensive coordinator right there, has had good second halves. Remember, Georgia started out 21 points in that first quarter, only scored one touchdown the rest of the game. But they need it now to stay in this football game. They cannot give up another touchdown here in the first half. McElroy, play fake, comes to his left under pressure. Heaves it away, out of bounds. Nosa Igwe was uh, the man, number 94, who was uh, in McElroy's vision. There's Igwe, red shirt, freshman from Mansfield, Texas. We have said that in this situation, the front four for Auburn has made plays. Fairly has one sack, but a penalty on top of it. See if he can do it here. Third and five. Jones top of the screen. Big pump and run action against him. McElroy under some pressure. Steps up. He's got a man open. It's Julio. I'll tell you, if you don't get him in the pocket, you're going to pay a penalty. Nico Thorpe in coverage, he can't cover, but watch the footwork by the quarterback. McElroy, he dodges the blitz and then doesn't panic. One on one to the outside. That time was created that time because McElroy was beautiful in the pocket. Watch this. Clee goes right around Carter that time and then makes the throw. Carter was basically unblocked and McElroy got that off. Richardson in and McElroy under center. First and goal. McElroy. Richardson dropped it. Wow. Oh. That shouldn't count if you got a streak going like no, that. Get should it. you? Should no. that shouldn't that be somewhere else? Shouldn't that be an error? Still got a no-hitter going or something like that? Gee, man. And Richardson, uh, much more than Ingram, has been used in the passing game. And here's the Alabama red zone two trips today. The Verizon red zone stats. Wildcat. McElroy wide left. Richardson. I'll tell you, Nick Fairley got the penetration that time to make the play. This could be a huge stop, but dropped on first time by Richardson. And watch Nick Fairley, number 90, get inside penetration. He's right here. Blocked down, doesn't get to him, crawls forward and throws himself on the play. Yes. Don't get it clear fast enough. Sorry there. Josh Bynes came up to clean it up, and now it's third and goal. Vlahos. Over the ball. Hanks joins Jones. McElroy incomplete. Intended for Hanks. Coverage from McNeil. Well, the first down drop 
just started it going the wrong direction, didn't it? This time, good coverage to the outside. Mike McNeil. It is a gray overcast day, but the blimp's up there. And thank heaven it is. Our aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Front move through here overnight. Heavy rains and a severe temperature drop. It was 80 degrees here yesterday. This morning, 42. And at game time, hovering between 45 and 50. But supposedly, this front is going to move on out of here. And the skies are expected to clear later this afternoon. That's as much as I know about weather. Seems like the Alabama sideline is bright sunny for their Yeah, it does, does it? <laughs> they, they look <laughs> happy as can be over there. What are you talking about, bad weather? <laughs> Here's Kate Foster to kick off. That's taken by McCaleb. Near side. Bumped out of bounds. Good coverage downfield on special Good teams. directional kick that time, too. Daquan Minzy. Well, the Alabama Crimson Tide won the national championship last year. Auburn trying to win it this year. And that leads us to the... Come on, Doug. He's not going to come out. The athletic trivia question. Oh, I missed him. Yep. I missed he the duck. There, yep. No. He did it quicker. It's Thanksgiving. He was very, very nervous. Yeah, the duck died. <laughs> he heard a lot of whack, whack, whack. <laughs> anyway, only one state has provided back-to-back -back national champions. I can't believe you missed it. I missed the duck. Yeah, boy. I tell you, the matchup that intrigued me in this game was the two guys that are calling the shots in this game. Nick Saban, who was at the peak of his career at LSU and he gets the Miami Dolphin job. At the same time, Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator, was a high school coach. I wondered, and I think a lot of the people in college football and love football wanted to know what would Nick do against this spread? Yeah, sure. Second down, sweep right. Great defensive and, suit, yes. I, and, and, and I've been asked, and here's my fir first recruit well is number one. Okay. <laughs> the guys up front have been winning the battles. Marcel Darius, those guys up front, square, they have been doing the job. Chapman, when you win in the defensive line, and it's why I don't think this offense would work in the National Football League, when Yule's defensive linemen do that, there's just no place to go. Third and five. Newton has a man open. It's Cody Burns, who, as we mentioned earlier, was the starting quarterback in this game two years ago here. That is a 20-yard game. Will Lowry with the tackle. A double pump caused Mark Barron to close on the play, and Cody Burns went right by him. Michael Dyer. Mark Barron, Mark Barron got him. Yeah. There's a flag down. There's three really All-Americans on this defense. Mark Barron is one of them. Substitution. Was it Chapman coming in late and Will Lowry going off the field late? Ooh. Oh, Mark Barron. Wow. That is a form tackle. I think Chapman 99 was coming on and 29 Will Lowry was coming off and then you got a quick snap by the Auburn offense. Nick Saban is out on here. the field. On the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. Auburn is allowed to quick snap if they don't substitute and they did not substitute on that play. First down. Newton, good downfield coverage. Boy, he can't get loose today. How many times this season have we seen him avoid defenders in space? Gary, goes back to your point. This is a really good tackling team. It is a good tackling team. And on tape, and we, we I told that to Kirby Smart, and he looked at me like we're dumbfounded. And I said, no, that's... You are. I hate to tell you, you're one of the better tackling teams in this conference. But I'll say another thing. The Alabama corners are locking on the Auburn receivers. They have no fear in their eyes. 
On second down, Newton rolling right. Off his back foot, he completes it. That's caught by Darvin Adams, number 89. And that's going to be a first down for Auburn. Just one more. One. I don't know if that one was caught or not. You're going to see a quick snap by Auburn here. This might one might want to be replayed. Oh, they beat it. No, no, no. It was stopped. The field judge stopped the play. They're going to review it. Bobby Eilat Jr. Play is under further review. Aha. Uh -huh. I think that ball hit the ground. Replay official is Ben Oldham. The catch given to Darvin Adams for the moment. Let's see if we can see it hit the ground. Hightower matching up. Ooh. Oh, the ball. You see that slip Ooh, through yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, they're gonna read, they're gonna overturn that. See, one of the differences that the Alabama defense does is they're willing to put their corners in man-to-man -man situations. There's not a lot of other teams that are willing to do it. Yeah, they're going to overturn that one. And it was third down on the play, so remember, that's going to probably force a punt. Most of the time, I think that they're going to be taken to review this is getting the ball back in the right spot mm -hmm. for fourth down. Darvin Adams. Leading receiver on the team, and now Tom Ritter. I, I, we have a little discussion up here whether it was second down the previous play or was it third? Oh, it was second down, I'm being told. So it would be third down coming up. My bad. You're forgiven. <laughs> you know, I, I have this eerie feeling that I've seen this before, okay? And I did a game, Nebraska, the day after Thanksgiving. When they played Colorado, they were the number one ranked team in the country, and I think they lost 63 to something. Eric Crouch, remember that 2001. team? 2001. 2001. They actually ended up still playing in the national championship game. Remember all that controversy right. after losing that game? Right. And I'll tell you something else I remember. Eric Crouch won the Heisman after losing that game. I do remember that, yes. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> Here's what I think. If Auburn, considering that TCU and Boise State have played the way they played, right. considering what Wisconsin done, another team, they better make this game a, a lot closer yes. if they lose. It has to be a hair loss. If they get blown out here, I, I don't think the, the voters are going to be kind to them. After further review, the pass is incomplete. Well, I would suggest that there's more than a small degree of interest in what's happening here in the state of Idaho and in north central Texas. And in the Big Ten, in the yeah, Big 12, yeah, and out yeah. there on the West Coast. You're right. So it's second down. No. Third, I beg your pardon. Yes. Okay, we have one each. No, you're right. Now Nick's out in the field again at the 50-yard line. Yeah, he, he knew the down marker was wrong. He knew it was third down. Too much turkey for too many people. Nick was confused, but yeah. we don't make as much money as Nick. He should know that thing, shouldn't he? Yeah, you make $4 million a year. <laughs> you're not allowed. No. No errors. There we go. They got their dime package in. That's Alabama. Let's Newton finds Cody Burns first down at the 40 yard line. I think this is the way that Auburn will have to open up the game. It will be with Cam Newton's arm. I think it's pretty clear that they're not able to block this front, this sold, sold out front by Alabama. He's going to have to do it with his arm. First and 10 from the 40. Quick hitter at left tackle. That's Michael Dyer, number five. Dyer, the true freshman out of North Little Rock, Arkansas, who turned down the Razorbacks to sign with Gus Malzahn and Auburn. Second and six. 
Goes deep, got a man open, wide open. Touchdown, Auburn! Emory Blake, number 80. He bobbled that thing, didn't he? And Mike, Mark Barron almost got it. It's that play action pass that Tebow made so famous. Quarterback play action, actually faking the run by himself and then delivering the ball with the pass. That's what they got. They got the pass game. Two man route to the outside and Mark Barron ahead of Emory Blake. 36 yard touchdown toss. Here's Wes Byram, the all time point scorer. Snuck that one in. Yes. And take another look at Emory Blake getting free. It's two on two out here. Watch Blake go right down the sideline. Barron pauses for a second. Just a second on the play action. See that? Just him looking inside and seeing the run. The ball was juggled. And then just before Barron gets his hand there, Blake secures it. Auburn gets on the board. Cam Newton with the touchdown toss. 24-7. More SEC action for you tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern time up in Little Rock. Significant SEC West battle. The fifth-ranked LSU Tigers against the Arkansas Razorbacks. And guess who's going to make a guest appearance on the pregame show tomorrow? Mr. Danielson, safe travels. I heard uh, Brando's ready for me. I got to get. I got to have to do some prep work for this thing. Tomorrow. That could mean any of several. No, things. but Brando, you know, he's, he's that TCU BYU Boise State yeah, guy. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I don't doubt for a moment that you've done your. Own. <laughs> I had this little iron bowl thing in between. 24-7, <laughs> you know. 508 to go. Richardson and Julio Jones in the deep men, and this will be Julio Jones at the seven. Kind of unusual to see your all-star yeah. wide receiver back there returning kicks. Well, he's the off guy, but they kicked it right to him, didn't they? You know, here it is right. Oh, I'm sorry, we got an answer first. I'm gonna... Yeah, I, I know you're standing by for this. I, I caught the duck. The only state with two different national champions in consecutive seasons, it would be Tejas. TCU, Davey O'Brien, the quarterback, 1938, Texas A&M. Jarn John Kimbrough, the star, 1939. Cam Newton, by the way, is one of three finalists for the Davey O'Brien Award this year. Kellen Moore, all of Andrew Luck, the other two. Oh, boy. That one floating around up in the air. Yeah, that was a great defensive call that time by Ted Roof. He had everybody at the line of scrimmage, but dropped one of his down linemen. Greg McElroy never saw it. He was lucky to get out of this. Watch, see Josh Burns right there. He was lined up as one of the down with his hand down, and he came back to make the play. McElroy nail gets rid of it to Dial, but Dial is upended as he gets to the 25. Boy, McElroy had a defender right in his face. Antoine Carter, number 45. Yeah, a little bootleg action. It's a sneak route to the outside. Dial gets it. Off the boot. This is a big stop right yes, here. Yes, it is. Auburn gets the ball back to start the second half, and they also get two starters, get two important backups on the defensive line in the second half. Third and seven. Blitz. Caught. First down at the 35-yard line. Darius Hanks, number 15. I'll tell you, Julio Jones' importance just to the outside of this. A little square out throw right here. But because Julio Jones has been having such a good game, inside Demon Washington didn't let him go, and that created the spot. Julio going to the outside. Demond Washington stayed with him two steps too long, and that created the hole in the zone. First down, 10. Ingram alongside McElroy. Good flip right side. Julio Jones, seventh catch. Great clock out there that time. Darius Hanks. I'll tell you, Julio Jones. This ball floats out there, and watch Hanks make the block. 
Number 15 throws and takes down Washington, and then he skips through. Right through Greg Stevenson's arms and into the secondary, and Julio Jones is having a monster, isn't he? Oh, my goodness, he's already at 174 yards. Could see it coming. Seven catches. McElroy has thrown for 300, and we're still early in the ball game. This is Ingram. Seventeen yard game. There's time to screen game. They throw long, they throw short, they go shotgun. Now it's their devastating screen game. Get outside behind Warmack. I don't know, there's not a lot of guys that read that screen blocking as well as Ingram does. Offensive coordinator for Greg McElroy is Jim McElwain from Montana. That's Jim with the uh, Noses, the uh, eyeglasses perched on his nose. I think back to the conversation we had with him last year, and he was concerned that perhaps the job of Alabama quarterback was too big for Greg McElroy. Yeah, he was wrong, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Greg McElroy has stepped up. And he's admitted that he, he was. Right. Two forty-one to go in the first half. Twenty-four, seven, Alabama, and they've ridden the arm of senior quarterback Greg McElroy. Seventeen of twenty-one in the first half. He's hit a career high. His previous high was three fifteen. His mom and dad, Greg and Janie, in the stands. Greg Senior is a senior executive with the Dallas Cowboys football team. Here's McElroy going right. Ingram. Craig Stevens. And we've met, uh, I don't know, half dozen, maybe eight times with Greg McElroy in the last couple of years as he has been a starter. And he did a very gracious thing yesterday. Our meeting was complete. He walked out, did a couple of on camera interviews, and came back in to say goodbye. Just said, uh, may not see you again. Thanks. Someday I hope you vote for me. Is that kind of <laughs> <all> this? <laughs> yeah, if it doesn't work out in sports management, politics is always going to be there. Well, he is strong. He wants to be a pro football player, and he might have a chance. Preston Dial. When you're that accurate of a thrower, this time it's go to Dial. The tight end just squares off. Ball's put proper, well, a little bit behind that time. Nice catch by Dial. But he's delivering the all time record, by the way, Scott Hunter, my old teammate. 1969, 484 against Auburn. Got a chance, doesn't he? Yeah. 140 to go. Here's a toss. Fumble. It's on the ground to Sharvin Bell. Yeah, he did a great job that time. Laid out. Carpenter was trying to get outside number 77 and Bell beats him, splits the block and makes the play. The ball's loosed. That would have been that's the second mm -hmm. time in one game. 110 to go before the break. My gosh. This has been unexpected. Play hey, he's got it. Might be Auburn a good timeout because yeah. I was just going to point out that he's got Washington on Julio Jones, a complete mismatch out there. Well, coming up the Geico halftime report, Tim Spencer, Archie Manning's with him. And when your son is thrown for 335 yards, or your brother, that's Greg, Jamie, and uh, the sister Blair on the right. Looks just like you and me doing soldier. Yeah, we did that one here, time. Right? Yeah. yeah. You wonder now if it's second down right here, goal to go. Do you not throw the ball twice at Julio Jones unless they double team him? And it actually does appear that they might double team him here. Oh, he fumbled. He barely, fumbled. barely got him again. Yes. I'll tell and you. Fairly recovers. He is as good as. 
Mark Rick, the coach from Georgia, said he's as close to Warren Sapp as I've seen. Watch him come through. I think that's him right there. Beats Steen inside. Remember, Barrett Jones would be there. He beats the substitute, and then he crawls back on the football. Huge play. Boy, is that guy quick. What a play. Newton back. Got a man open. Darvin Adams. Little tap dance on the sidelines. Move the chain. I asked Gus Malzahn about Cam Newton. I said, Gus, if he was in a spread passing attack, could he lead the country in passing? And he said yes. 49 seconds to go. Auburn with only one timeout remaining. But even the denial of points by and that point twice, recovery. Twice down yes. there. Drop pass by Richardson and a sack. Remember, he had the big stop previous, too. Right side tipped. Great for Patrick. And then... The pass is caught, but out of bounds. Yeah, that was a great play by Darvin Adams right there. Small windows. They have to be thrown in here. Kirkpatrick tips it. Adams stays with it. Had his foot down. Oh. We're going to look at it. The answer apparently is no. Wrap around, Ontario McKayla. Hey, C.J. Mosley, freshman, a true freshman. Can you imagine walking in to a national championship defense and starting as a freshman? You know, he was a high school basketball player and track star. He's barely even touched a weight in his life. He's going to grow up to be a huge linebacker. Newton got it. Courtney Upshaw, number 41. Timeout. That is the fourth sack by Alabama. I'll tell you, that's the second time he's gotten Lee Zimba on this with an inside move this time. Man, oh man. I think that front four for Alabama hasn't been challenged to be a difference maker in this game. Well, there was one play a moment ago that was not challenged, was not reviewed. I'll tell you, I would have wanted to take in a second look at that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. That, that shot we had right there was pretty clear. Kirkpatrick does a wonderful job getting his hand on it, but look at Darvin Adams. Concentrating one hand, knows Lowry's going to put one on him. I hit it right on the end of the play. Hmm. Shoemaker on the punt. 11 seconds before the break. Mays says, "Get away from it," and uh, he does. It'll come to rest after 34. McElroy and Julio Jones were brilliant in the first half, leading to a 24-7 Alabama lead. But Nick Fairley's fumble recovery after the sack of Greg McElroy denied Alabama another scoring opportunity. Here's Tracy and Gene Chizik. Thanks, Vern. Coach, this is the first time we've really seen Cam Newton struggle to move the ball. What's been the problem so far? Well, I just think our whole football team right now, we need to settle down and play. We had a little bit of success there um, later in the in the half. 
we got to settle down. We got to figure out what adjustments we need to make. Defensively, we're giving up too many big plays, so we got to go get, get it figured out. You mentioned the big plays on defense, and we talked before the game about containing Julio Jones, and you said that would be key. So, what do you need to do in the second half? Well, we're going to have to find some ways to double him, to play uh, hard on him up front, and play somebody deep over the top. We just got to get him under control, and we got to tackle better. Thanks a lot, thank Vern. You. Tracy, thank you. 24 7, Alabama leads it. Let's go back to Tim Brando in our New York studios. Okay, Vern, coming up. This is the 75th playing of the Iron Bowl. First in 1893. Let's go down to Tracy moments ago. She's with Nick Saban. Coach, as Auburn team comes in, number one in the SEC in rushing, negative 10 yards in this first half. How have you been able to limit Cam Newton and what they well, can do? We've just done a good job up front, but you know they're a good team. We, we've got to keep adjusting to what they do, and we got to keep playing on the line of scrimmage and doing a good job of tackling. But we got to eliminate the big plays, and we got to take advantage of our opportunities when we get the ball in the red zone. Thanks a lot. Good luck in the right, second half. You. I gather he wasn't too happy with those fumbles and that uh, drop pass. Yeah, I mean, there's three more times that point, you know, touchdowns could have been scored. As bad as, as bad as it is for Auburn, it could have been worse. Yes. Right? Kate Foster, number 43, getting ready to kick off on your left is Ontario McCaleb, and there is. Demond Washington one kickoff return for a touchdown this year that of 95 yards 24 7 Vern Lundquist Gary Danielson Tracy Wilson third quarter underway at the 10 Washington and he moves it out across the 30 to the 32 well what do you think? Can Auburn get back? I was out at practice Wednesday, right. and my old coach, Joe Pendry from the Cleveland Browns, told me this. He goes, Gary, it's blocking and tackling. No matter what the formations are, what happens. And in this game, Alabama has blocked better and tackled better so far in this football game. And that's why they're dominating so far. This Auburn veteran offensive line must do a better job up front. Cam Newton will be throwing, but they can't allow that penetration there it is again oh boy Hightower got it yeah and right behind him was Mark Barron right two one two three hitting it and you know Vern against these spreads I've been saying all year you cannot allow the quarterback to stand still and do the stutter step it looks to me like this Alabama front Instead of just playing two gap, they're coming off the edges and trying to hit the play in the backfield. Loss of one. Newton back to throw deep, and he's got Emory Blake wide open. There was Barron, and Barron falls down. It's Zachary instead of Blake. 81 instead of 80. Zachary opens with a 70-yard touchdown catch. Understand what Mark Barron was doing on this play. I thought he had an interception all the way, and then at the end, he just kind of stood there and never wrapped up the, the, the receiver. Well, how about that to open up the third quarter? Hey, this guy is not just a runner. I've been saying it all year. Cam Newton can throw the football. Now you have a football game. Bottom of the screen, Barron goes to center field and then adjusts to the ball. Just overran it, never found the football. And what a great job Zachary did concentrating on the ball. You see Barron overran it, misjudged it, and Auburn's back in the game. Darrell Zachary's 70-yard touchdown catch has carved seven off the deficit. 
as uh, Auburn tries to come from what was a 21 nothing trailing. They have come back against West Virginia in 09 and three times this year from Clemson, South Carolina, and Georgia. And they're trying to climb out of an even, even deeper hole today. Yeah. I've been saying all week I thought it'd be a high scoring game, but it's going to be, if, if Auburn gets in, it's going to have to be a real high scoring game. <laughs> West Byram will kick off. One more look. Dean Milliner number is playing corner on the play. Down here is where it happens. But watch Mark Barron's action on the play. Play action pass. He takes the tight end for a while and then gets past the wide receiver right here. Goes back for the wide receiver. Now the ball's in the air. I thought he's going to eat this pass up all the way. And he just kind of overruns it. And as Nick Saban said to Tracy not two minutes ago, we can't give up the big play. That's a big play. McElroy quarterback Mark Ingram is the running back. On first down 10, the sun starts to peek through the clouds. Ingram to the 45. After that out of bounds kickoff, let's uh, take a look at first half trends. Well, it's going to be all Alabama, obviously, when McElroy started out so hot. Career high in the first half, obviously. Cam Newton, known as a runner and passer. First half, he was mostly a passer, but not the yards you expect. Auburn's rush game, so hot. Consecutive 300-yard games, minus 10. And, of course, Julio Jones has been a mismatch. Marquise Mays in motion. McElroy throws it behind him. Nico Thorpe, number 15, defending, and he had a better shot at the ball than did Mays. Third down. A sense of hope from the Auburn crowd. Mike Blanc, number 93, is on the field. He sat out. He was one of two who had to sit out the first half because of ejections in the game against Georgia. So Blanc is out there, number 93. McElroy back. Across the middle, caught. Barry, fourth down. Mike McNeil level. Darius Hanks. Call it a robber defense. Put your safety, and he takes the crossing routes on the play. Man to man on the outside. Actually, on that play, Greg McElroy misread it. And will they go for it on fourth down? It appears they will. Or at least try to draw him offside. Yeah. One of the two, right? Fourth and one. And here comes Alabama. McElroy, I don't know. Now the nose appeared to nudge the yellow line. First down. And that yellow line, of course, I've told you over the years, is unofficial. Nice quick count. Good strategy by Alabama. You see Auburn was still lining up, and they caught him in a quick count on the sneak. There it is right on top. You can see it. Good angle right in the crease. First down, 10. Alabama. Big cushion out on Julio Jones out there. Hand off, right tackle. Mark Ingram, number 22. And Julio Jones having a, a wonderful day today. Seven catches, 174. And almost see it coming. We built this thing, figuring it might happen, and it happened. Huh? Yeah. The big receivers all across this league has given this Auburn defense fouls. Second down eight. There's Julio Jones. Top of the screen, wide left. Ingram splits out wide right. Nico Thorpe has him. Little pass underneath to Richardson, who trips and falls and is down at the 10. And El Toro Freeman, number 21 was there to make sure he stayed down. Yeah, he beat Anthony Steen that time. The guard 
Alabama screen game that is so good and Freeman did a wonderful job of anticipating that screen and beating the guard to the spot. Third and 10. Well, we like to look at matchups in the secondary, but the matchup that's going to count is that guy right there. They have to figure out a way to slow him down. Alabama calls time. So they use one facing third and ten. We'll be right back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by TIAA Prep. The Home Depot. Chick-fil-A. And by Liberty Mutual. Proud of you from overhead of Bryant Denny Stadium over the avenue to your left. That's Paul Bryant Drive. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. There have been some missed opportunities for the Crimson Tide here. First play was made by Anton Carter, number 45. Remember, he pops the ball loose. Goes out of the end zone or recovered in the end zone by Auburn. That was one save. The drop pass by Richardson. And Nick Fairley stopped the running play after that and then got a sack and recovered his own fumble. He caused fumble on the play. Big stops by this Auburn defense. And they, if they get another one right here, they're going to get back on the field with only a 10-point game. Third down 10 right now. McElroy looking deep left side for Hanks. It's tipped and incomplete. That was to Sharvin Bell, number 22. Well, he had one on one to the outside. To Sharvin Bell just beat him. Ball was thrown behind again. That ball was thrown behind. McElroy would have got that out in front of him. That would have been a complete pass. But that's what happens when you go man to man. You force a perfect throw, and he didn't get one. Cody Mandel is on to punt. His first today. And Quindarius Carr, number nine, has uh, perched at the 10 yard line. Nice and high. And a fair catch called by Carr at the 18 yard line. 32 yard punt, nothing on the return. And so. This game never ceases to amaze me. Just stay in it, just keep chopping wood. Get back in the game, and Auburn is back in this football game. We'll be back in a moment. South Carolina Gamecocks have won the SEC East. They do have a game at Clemson tomorrow, but they will make their way to Atlanta for the first time. And they will take on the Auburn Tigers. Auburn has already clinched the spot out west. Auburn, South Carolina in Atlanta. And we will, of course, be there next Saturday afternoon. Four o'clock Eastern time. The Gamecocks in the SEC championship game for the first time. Look forward to seeing Steve Spurrier along with Gene Chizik and the Auburn Tigers in the Georgia Dome. 24-14. Ontario McCaleb is alongside Camden. Into the secondary one of the few times today. And he's still not in positive yardage rushing the football. That's a six yard gain, but he's still minus four carrying because in college ball, for some reason, they insist on taking sacks off the rushing tour. And Alabama's had four of them today. Yeah. They're the worst in the SEC in sacks. McCaleb going around the edge. Get a block on the corner. And Barron forces him out of bounds. But it's an Auburn first down. 
And now, because of the two scores, this Auburn team can now run their entire offense. You get the passing game going, and all of a sudden, the fly sweep game and the run game goes. Cody Burns and Emery Blake, two wide receivers, with key blocks to get McCaleb around the corner. First down, 10. They come left side. It's Michael Dyer forced inside by Courtney Upshaw. Well, Cam Newton. Yeah, he can't do it himself from the first half. That defensive line and linebackers for Alabama seem to find all of the gaps and defeated all of the blocks, but he's been coming on late. And he can throw the football. Second down, nine. That one tipped and incomplete. It was intended for Eric Smith, the H-back. Yeah, C.J. Mosley did a great job again. Right in the right spot. spot. Mosley, number 32, reads the eyes of Cam Newton. Even if it would have been completed, it would have been for a very short game. Third and nine. Alabama with three down. Hightower is basically their wild card guy. He's half defensive and half linebacker. And he comes. Newton chased. Heaves it. Incomplete for Darvin Adams. Fourth down. Pressure inside. Hightower and Darius forced Cam out of the pocket. Threw it on the run, and you can see behind the receiver, Darvin Adams on the play. Good pass rush. Forced Cam out of the pack pocket. Ryan Shoemaker on the punt. Return on all the way. Fair catch called and taken by Marquise Mays. That's a 36-yard punt. And with the fair catch, nothing on the return. 24-14 with 9.05 when we come back. Greg McElroy at quarterback. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete, Ryan Pugh. 3.5 grade point average in building sciences and a low senior class award finalist for the Auburn Tigers. And for the Alabama Crimson Tide, Barry Jones unable to play today. The right, uh, right guard for this team, a 4.0 with a major in accounting and a 2010 Crusader First Team All-American. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Michael Goggins, number 49, is on the field now for Auburn for the first time. He, like Blanc, had to sit out the first half because of the ejection in the game against Got to figure they're going to get the ball to Julio Jones here quick, don't you think? Well, McElroy is going to be sacked before he can throw it. What? Gary, this Alabama team was so dominant in the last four drives. A fumble, a field goal, a fumble, and a punt. Yeah, and, and right now, Craig has to understand that he just doesn't have that long to throw the ball. This front four, that time it was Goggins made the play, number 49. He's got to throw on rhythm against this front four for Auburn. Second down and 12. Is that a good you? Those guys are good. There it is. There it is. Yep. Julio Jones caught from behind. He does manage to get out near the 27-yard line. Zach Etheridge, number four, wrapped him up. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. All right, Vern, it's the last game for Colorado in the Big 12. And watch Rex Burkett here on the halfback pass for Nebraska. He finds Brandon Kenny. For 26 yards and a touchdown, 17-3 Huskers at the half with a win. They will claim the Big 12 North. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. It's third down and seven here. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that wide receiver screen on first down, to tell you the truth. Jones, bottom of the screen. Blitz. McElroy hit as he lets it go. Incomplete. 
That blitz obviously affected McElroy. Yeah, Josh Bynes that time. Flag down. It was Josh Bynes who was coming. Sure. They jumped to a bare front. What that means is they covered the three inside guys, and this time the linebacker comes right, and that's a clean play. That can't be the penalty. Which obviously was on Alabama. Everybody's switching on the field. Yeah. Tom Ritter is our referee. There's Josh Bynes. Leading tackle. An eligible player downfield on the offense. The tight end was covered up. A penalty is declined. Fourth down. And so the Tigers will get it back. Bynes, middle linebacker for the Tigers, leading tackler on the team. And Cody Mandel will punt for the second time. It's Quindarius Carr back to return it. He wears number nine in white. Fair catch. Carr grabs it, 25 yard line. Sunday. 7.39 to go in this one. With seven minutes to go in the second quarter, the Crimson Tide of Alabama had a 24 to nothing lead. Second play of this half, Cam Newton hit Terrell Zachary with a 70 yard touchdown. Here's Newton into the secondary. Out to the 34, maybe the 35. Lester made the tackle. Well, this is the zone read keep off the fly sweep. Actually, it's a power play that time. Byron Isom just comes. It's a kick out all the way. But you will notice so far in this game, the Alabama secondary is tackling well. They're not giving up the missed tackle big plays. A couple bad pass plays. Yes. Second and one. Newton fires it out to McCaleb. Out on the edge. And McCaleb out of bounds at the 49 with a fresh series of downs for the Titans. And a guy is able to throw the ball like Cam does. And the type of offense that he has, Gus Malzahn been running it for five years. They are making adjustments. Play fake. Newton cuts it up, gets a couple. He's across the 50 near the 48. There's Gus Malzahn. Had that picture a while ago when uh, he was at Springdale, Arkansas High School. His quarterback then was Mitch Mustaine, who started as a freshman at Arkansas, transferred to USC, and will get his first start tomorrow night because of Matt Barkley's injury as USC host Notre Dame. Second down. I think they only got 10 guys out there. Really? Yep. Reverse. Zachary. I'm pretty sure they only had 10. Hmm. Yeah. Flag is down. <coughs> sure. I don't think having 10 is a penalty. No. Well, the indication is substitution infraction against uh, Alabama. Substitution infraction on the defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. It just me must means that one of their players didn't get out on the field past the hash, I guess, of the numbers. Let's go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. You can almost see down here on the bottom, Nick Saban was yelling for one more player to get out there. Yeah. Well, they haven't moved the, uh, now they're moving the market. Oh, and I think what happened is real late on the play, Will Lowry came out yes. on the play. And that's what actually caused the penalty. If they would have just played with 10, they were okay. Hand off. McCaleb around the corner. And a first down at the Alabama 33-yard line. Read play. 
deep play, well blocked that time by Zimba. He's had some trouble, trouble pass blocking, but that time he did a good job on the run block. Lee Zimba again with the block, and here goes McKenna. He's got a lot of speed, not a big guy, 170 pounds. Milner, number 28, makes the tackle. That's a gain of 20. Incredible. You watch his team good block up front that time by Mike Berry, the left guard. Gets it into the secondary. Another successful play. You can see the speed up the off. The hurry up offense now is starting to take effect. Newton inside the 10. He can pick up two yards just by falling over. Yes, he can. He's very tough to stop in those short yarded situations. C.J. Mosley. Kirby Smart, right side, Nick Saban. Second and six at the eight. I think Auburn ran that play with only 10 men on the field. Because two guys just ran in and only one guy left. Hmm. Deductive reasoning. Yep. Fannin, who hasn't played much today. Here's Newton. There's Mario Fannin. You think the play was designed for him? And that's going to be a first and goal. Mario Fannin, number 27. Boy, what's the lesson for Auburn? Keep playing. What's the lesson for Alabama? Don't give away opportunities. Auburn's got their offense going now. Well, we are getting set up for some kind of final quarter. 4.34 to go in the third. Newton has it. Touchdown, Tigers! Cam Newton rode the block of Mike Berry. Power one way, unbalanced line, just powered in. Incredible. If it was a little league game, they might have mercyed it in the first quarter. It was 21-0 after three Alabama possessions. Simultaneously, three consecutive three and outs. This is what happens when you have 24 seniors on your football team like Auburn. 18th rushing touchdown to break the school record held by a couple of pretty decent players. Bo Jackson, Cadillac Williams, 24-21. Kind of an animated conversation going on with Cam Newton and his coach, Gus Malzahn. 24-21, 4-25 to go. Bo Jackson in 85, Cam Newton in 10. Jackson, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner in 85. And Newton, the presumptive front runner this year. So much in terms of his aspirations for a Heisman and leading his team to a national title. Reside in the next... 19 minutes on this football field. Julio Jones, Trent Richardson, back to return it. Wes Byram will kick it off. In this situation, coaches I've had have always said, think players, not plays. They need to go to Mark Ingram, Julio Jones. Two weeks ago, Byram had an onside kick against Georgia, not this time. It's a kind of a squib. Oh, and it will man. go right between Richardson and Jones and will result in a touchback. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Vern, Gary, Kellen Moore, one of the top three, no doubt, in the Heisman balloting, one would think, will be showcasing his talents tonight against Nevada. And by the way, Gary, you and I will have a little conversation about their validity for a possible BCS championship tomorrow. Okay, buddy? Well, Michael James is considered number two by most observers. He'll play tonight against Arizona. And Terrell Pryor will have at least a Rose Bowl berth on the line for Michigan tomorrow. Back to you guys. Your turn. I'm watching a lot of good football players out here, Tim. That's all I got to say. <laughs> a lot of good football players. First down and 10. Alabama by three. On first down, it's Richardson. Yes. Craig Stevens, number 46. And through the wars, a senior. He was here when they lost 36-0. He was there last year when they almost took the championship away from Alabama. 
the Alabama offensive line that was dominating in the first half is no longer getting any push. Second down and nine. Preston Dial comes up tight to the right. Jones, top of the screen. McElroy back. Fires it deep. Tipped incomplete. Yeah, he dropped it. McNeil and Bynes around the body of Julio Jones. Can't throw it any better than this one. You're going to get hit anyway. Julio usually catches that, but Bynes got his hand on it. If you notice that, Bynes popped that ball loose. Nice play by Josh Bynes. Look at the total yardage. First half, second half. Here's your basic big third quarter play. Third and nine in a three-point game. McElroy, little swing. Richardson trying to get loose. He's brought down. What a terrific effort. Antoine Carter, number 45. Fourth down. Alabama has to punt. Give that call to the front four for Auburn. The coaching staff for Alabama did not believe they could pass block him. And on third and long, they went with a screen pass. And so fourth down. Alabama will give it up. Darius Carr back at the 40. So barring something extraordinary, pretty good field position now for the Auburn Tigers. Whoa. No. It's all loose. It's loose. Wow. What a decision by Carr. What was he thinking? Without a fair catch, the way that offense has been going. Oh, man. First it was Drake Kirkpatrick, and then it was cleaned up by Courtney Upshaw. Watch Drake Kirkpatrick, number one. Upshaw pops it loose. And I think Kirkpatrick might have got it. Yes, he did. On called for play, especially these two teams. They're number one and number three in the country, not giving up returns. You almost know you got a fair catch. And he has made fair catches throughout. Here's McElroy in the first turnover of the game. Quickly, who do you think he might want to go to? Yep. And I'll tell you, Steen, offensive lineman that replaces Barrett Jones, is down on the play. That's a nice catch. A little bit back shoulder, but receiver adjusted to it. That's a gain of 14 and a first down at the 13-yard line, call it. Quindarius Carr with a decision to return the punt. Hit by Courtney Upshaw and Dre Kirkpatrick fumbles. 2.13 to go. Here's McElroy. Here's Julio Jones. I thought that ball was a little late that time. On a quick pitch like that, I thought Greg McElroy should have got it there quicker. Big cushion to the outside. Takes a little too long and allowed Nico Thorpe to come and close on the play. Second and five. Still positive, though, huh? At the seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alabama has forced six red zone turnovers in 2010. Have committed. McElroy. Third down. Tried to run a pick play that time, and even you saw Julio Jones saying you should have thrown it to the other guy. Julio tried to pick Josh Bynes on the play, and they were trying to go to Ingram. Watch Julio come down and try to pick right there for the linebacker. Ingram was running run the wheel. Pick, and then kind of thought, I, I, I could see, he said, should have thrown it to my other shoulder if you were going to show it. See, throw it to my outside. Steen still not in the game. Yes. 
Third down. McElroy looking for Jones, fires it inside, up and over the top, and the flag is thrown. Two of them. Damon Washington, number 14. Two of them. One interference, and maybe one in illegal procedure. Yes, there is one back at the seven. Prior to the snap, false start, 65 offense. So that five yard penalty remains third down. That forces them to pick up the other flag now. It was actually no play. That's why it's not offsetting penalties. Watch a left guard over here. I think that's where it happens to a little flinch. Yes, yep. just before. Play is dead right there, no interference. Chase Warmack, that's a pre snap call. Now Boy, McElroy hurries into the huddle. Could Auburn get another stop here? My, my, my. Nine seconds on the play clock. Now it's seven. Third down. Four man rush for the Tigers. McElroy being chased and driven out of bounds. So after the turnover by Quindarius Carr, the Auburn defense holds Alabama and forces them into a field goal try. Third time inside the 10 yard line for Alabama today. Had to settle for a field goal. Of course, they had the sack and the fumble, and right now they have a field goal try. Jeremy Shelley, who is the short field goal man for the Crimson Tide, is one of one today. This will be from 33 yards out. A.J. McCarron's hold is good, and Shelley cuts it inside the left upright. But Gene Chizik's got to be a little happy in Quindarius Carr slightly relieved. Absolutely. Sunday on CBS, a world premiere movie that will touch your heart and leave you smiling. Hallmark Hall of Fame's November Christmas, Sunday only, CBS. Twenty-seven, twenty-one, one hundred five to go. What a stop for this Auburn defense! What an he thought it was. Still Halloween and not Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was. Kate Foster will kick off. McCaleb, DeMond, Washington are deep. Washington, as we mentioned, had that 95-yard kickoff return to a touchdown against Ole Miss. He will get this one 95 yards away. Good return after the 33. Well, we said Nick Fairley's going to have to make some plays, and he has made some plays. Remember, he's crawling through and stopping the running play. Then the next time Alabama's down there, he gets the sack and recovers the fumble. And then last time, that defensive line again forces McElroy with good coverage this time in the secondary. Antoine Carter comes around and makes the play. That's three times. This Auburn defense has held Alabama inside the 10 without a touchdown. Ontario McCaleb gets fake from Newton. Newton cuts it back up the middle of the field across the 35 out near the 38. Mark Barron, number four, makes the tackle. 45 seconds to go, third quarter. I talked to Gus Malzahn about calling his offense. He says he memorizes it. He does not go off his board. He said, I don't have time to look at my board. Second down, six. Again, the fake. They swing it out to McCaleb, and he's out on the edge by himself. Nice play by Cam. Yes, indeed. Kirkpatrick with the tackle, but a first down. Auburn stops the clock with 20 seconds. This is the same play that they hit for a touchdown. Play action pass inside. Not there. He drops it off to his running back and makes the first down pass. 10 seconds to go. And off three yards, maybe four to the 49. Michael Dyer, number five, the freshman. 
And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. That's the end of three with the score, Alabama 27, Auburn 21. We will return to Bryant Denny Stadium right after this word from your local station. A 5.3 liter V8, an EPA estimated 21 highway miles per gallon, and 20 inch chrome clad wheels will take you through a lot of rivers and plenty of woods. During the GMC Holiday Event, get 0% financing plus 1500 allowance on the Sierra Z60, plus no monthly payments until spring. It's our best offer of the year. Everybody's talking about the Iron Bowl, so I figured I'd come to a metal shop to talk about work. A third of Alabama's skilled tradesmen are over 50, and they're retiring fast. Guess who's replacing them? No one. That means real opportunity for anybody willing to take the time to learn a skill or master a trade. Look, if you really want to get into the end zone, you might have to get your hands dirty. Something to think about no matter who you're rooting for. So go build Alabama, and go build Auburn, too. Where'd you get that app? Cellular South has countless free Android apps. Do you mind? Oh. <laughs> They're less down the street. See? Where'd you get that app? And only from Cellular South, the ever-evolving Discover Apps app helps you find the right apps for you. That's really cool. Get the Android-powered Samsung Galaxy S for $199.99. Now at Cellular South. Eastern Shore Toyota, I-10, exit 38. Welcome you back to Tuscaloosa and the 75th playing of the Iron Bowl, Auburn and Alabama, these two bitter in-state rivals. Alabama, the defending national champions, had a 24-0 lead. Auburn, undefeated, ranked second in the country and second in the BCS, has come back to trail by six. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, the Crimson Tide, and the Tigers on second and seven, the handoff right side. And McCaleb gets the handoff. It's going to be third down. Well, we thought we might get something special. It looks like we're going to. Uh, this conference never ceases to show up every week in, week out. Well, they say the definition of a rivalry is when the fear of losing to your rival is more intense than the joy of winning the game. And I think this rivalry has shown that today. Neither one of these two teams want to step up there after this game and say, oh, no, i got to hear about this for a whole year. Newton left side. Good tackle. It sure was. That was D. Menzi. It's fourth down. I'll be surprised if Auburn doesn't punt this ball the way their defense has been playing in the second half. Whoa, did Malzahn just said, do you want to go for it? Fourth and three. Let's talk about this. Yes. So they call timeout. Well, remember, he tied up the score against Georgia two weeks ago and then went for the onside kick. They're having a discussion. Did you pick up three yards? You better have a good play. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Alabama opened quickly. Here was McElroy handing off to Mark Ingram, who skipped in untouched, 7 0. Alabama, next possession. McElroy, Julio Jones, 68 yards. 14 to nothing. Alabama, McElroy, who hit a career high of 335 in the first half, finds Darius Hanks, 21 zip. Shelley made it 24 nothing with this 20 yard field goal. And then Auburn began this uh, tenacious comeback. First Blake with a touchdown. Zachary, 70 yards. With the touchdown, second play of third quarter. Cam Newton over 
right guard for a touchdown, made it 24-21. Shelly kicks the field goal from 32, and that's where we stand, 27-21. These coaches have to make these tough decisions. I'm saying from up here, I just don't, the way their defense is playing, Alabama has not proved they could block Auburn's defensive line. I would not risk field position. They will go for it on fourth and three. Lutz and Kirkin comes in tight. This could be a short punt. Yes, it could be. No. Got it. Darvin Adams. Oh, my goodness. They did the same thing in a game that we did. It was either LSU or Georgia game. A very similar play. Pulled him in like that, and he missed the pass. Just like that. This time he delivers it. First down after the fourth and three. Play fake. Newton looks for a block to McCaleb, gets a little bit of one, and is out of bounds with another first down. Fourth and three. Now, Newton has kicked it in this situation yeah. before this year. Going to go one-on-one. -on -one. He knew it was one-on-one. -on -one. How about the faith they have in their quarterback? Is he a running quarterback? Yes, he is, but he's a throwing quarterback, too. First down, 10 at the 25. They come right, Dyer, a lot of room, out of bounds, inside the 15, another Auburn first down. I got a big smile on my face because I just admire all these guys, the way they're competing out here. The shock that they got hit with early in this game and the way they're coming back now, the offense is going quickly. First down and 10. Up the middle they go again. It's Michael Dyer again. Dyer, another one of those true freshmen. They play six different true freshmen on defense. Not all in started roles, obviously, but they play. And you can see the horizon red zone. Second down. Alabama brings one off the corner. Quick flip out to the left side. This is Emory Blake. And he fights his way to the seven-yard line. Yeah, well defended that time. Turned back inside to where all the help was pursuing inside. And it brings up third down on the 11th play of the drive. Third and four, training by six. Newton back to throw, under some pressure, pulls up, has his man open, caught, Lutzen Kirken. Auburn has claimed a tie in the ball game. Wow. West Byron for the extra point. He's missed one this year. Neil Caudill, the backup quarterback to hold. It's up, and it is good. And the undefeated Auburn Tigers have climbed back, having trailed by 24 to take a one-point lead. It's the court tight end sneak. They're going to roll this way. All the action goes this way. And Lutzen Kirkin delays and goes to the backside. Block, 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 delay, released. One of the defenders, I think it was Lester, number 37, had man-to-man -man on him. He released the tight end. Once he released, wide open. Lutzen Kirkin. Gene Chizik. That's a little easier to pronounce. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company, LG, Sonic, and by Jared the Jeweler. I know that we're in Tuscaloosa, but you can say the sun is shining in Auburn. 
right now. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS provided by Goodyear. 24 down, and Auburn has climbed back into the lead. It's not the first time they've come from a deficit. Mississippi State stopped at midfield on the final drive. They won by three. Clemson missed a 32-yard field goal in overtime. They defeated them by three. South Carolina trailed by six in the fourth quarter, wound up winning 35-27. West Byram, his time expired. They defeated Kentucky 37-34. Trailed by six in the fourth against Arkansas. Scored 28 unanswered. And here they were down by 24, seven minutes to go in the first half. And the sun is shining on some of those Auburn fans up there in the upper deck. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't that an omen? Well, there is no such thing as omens in football. You got to block and tackle. Now it's Alabama's turn. Taking short, Jones to the 32 yard line. Well, some of the Auburn fans, you don't get the best seats here, but look at that. Look at that. That's the Auburn section. <laughs> Omens. Well, 28-27, Alabama, the last four possessions, punt, 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 and a field goal. Well, you get inside the 10-yard line three times, you come out with two field goals. That's going to come back and hunt, and it has. McElroy, and off left side, Richardson breaks the tackle, and he is down at the 38-yard line. And let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, after that kickoff return, Herlio Jones came to the bench limping. They are looking at his right knee right now. Any more information, I'll pass it on. At the end of the kickoff uh, return, Gary, see if you can see what might have happened. Looked like he caught a kind of a kick. A spinning Auburn player gets spun into him. See that? His right heel kicks him right in the, above the knee. Maybe a thigh bruise. Second down, three. Richardson, right side. That's a first down, Alabama. Now say what you want about some of the deficiencies in the Auburn secondary. Their rush defense has been solid all year. And again, this defense for Auburn has stepped up in the second half and pretty much, as the graphic showed you, has put stops up there. Fairly, Clayton, Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator. Of course, his head coach is a great defensive coordinator. When in 2004, he was the defensive coordinator when Auburn went undefeated. McElroy back. Flushed, shoves it out. Richardson has it. Denied the first down, but a nice positive play. Yeah, but I think he might have got Greg McElroy tweaked just a bit on the play. It was very close to the line of scrimmage. Good coverage downfield. Comes forward, yes. Had his foot behind. Oh, wow. Yep. The Toro Freeman. Uh, yeah, Julio Jones still on the bench. Yeah. Second down, one. Alabama trailing by one. 9.50 to go. Richardson going right. Close for the first down. Might be another reason why Alabama is forced to run the ball here. Darius Hanks and Julio Jones, number 15 and number eight, two of the top three receivers on the bench for Alabama. Darius Hanks, Julio Jones. Uh, Tracy informs us it is a rib. Third down, less than a foot, it would appear. It's funny they've gone completely with Trent Richardson in this drive, too, so far. Timeout, Alabama. Exactly nine to go. It's 28-27.
Auburn. Reverse the teams, and there are some remarkable similarities in this game. Last year, it was Auburn that jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Then Alabama chipped away in the fourth quarter. Bama down 21-20. Greg McElroy led the tide on a 15-play, 79-yard touchdown drive capped by this toss to Roy Upchurch. That kept Alabama undefeated. They won the SEC in the battle with Florida and then the national championship. Well, here we have Cam Newton's Auburn team having clawed back to claim the lead once down by 24. That, there's a flag down. If the play stands, it appears he has the first down. It appears that he does. But illegal shift. Illegal shift on the offense. Not all players got set. Five yard only, third down. Boy, third and inches. Those receivers had no factor in the play. Mm. They never got set one second when the ball was snapped. That's the call. And so, officially now it's third and six. Yeah, and it's Earl Anthony out there instead of Julio Jones. McElroy. Ooh, nice play. Oh, I don't know. Do Marquise got Mays, yeah. yes. Marquise Mays with a spin might have picked up the first down. He spun forward. Beautiful play by Mays. Yes. Feeling that pressure. Chain will come out. Double rub play. Tight ends on one side. Anthony comes across the other way. Rub the other way. Just inches. Whoa. Another look. Maze with the spin. And so. 8.23 to go, fourth and inches. Obviously, twice they've run quarterback sneaks. Get down and get low. <laughs> CG. <laughs> get down, get ready, he said, because they quick snapped it. Ingram is in the backfield. McElroy. Oh, yep, yep, yep. At least according to the unofficial yellow line. Now, El Toro Freeman has the ball in his hands, mm -hmm. but there was no indication of a fumble down in the pile. Josh Bynes is arguing, I think, with the spot. Hit, Bynes hits him just as he lunges forward, but he only needed an inch. And he got it. Gene Chizik. He said the ball came out. First down 10, 8.08 to go. I do have to admire the incredible job Gene Chizik has done with this football team. All of the distractions, all of the pressure down on the road to Alabama when his team fought back. Toss. Left side, Ingram. Whoa. Put it on the ground again. It's down. Alabama recovers. So Mark Ingram, having put it on the ground twice in his career prior to today, has put it on the ground three times. Yeah, this one, one. This one might have been caused by him hitting the ground, though, and it probably would have, would have been forward progress right there and not been called a fumble. Second and six. Ingram, who had 30 yards in last year's win, 
has 30 yards in today's game in which they trail by one. Ingram. How about this? Two of your top receivers out of the game. Alabama shifts gears. They run the ball behind James Carpenter, number 77. Warmack, number 65, pulls around. Carpenter, who started every game of his career since he came to Alabama as a junior college player, was put in at left tackle. He's been there ever since. Darius Hanks, Julio Jones still on the bench. Marquise Mays and Earl Alexander are the wideouts. Ingram, the running back, behind McElroy. It'll be Ingram again. They'll work the edge. And Ingram is in trouble. Dropped at the 37. He lost yardage. Nico Thorpe, number 15, with the top. Yeah, I think Antonio Freeman, though, number 21, did a great job coming in there on the first to stop it. Also, Vern, watch. Freeman come inside, cause the stop, and then it's cleaned up by Thorpe. Good defense. 6-10 to go. Second and 12. Remember last year, Auburn, as Fern showed you that highlight, led by 1.21-20. When Alabama made that drive, they're not going to be able to kill the whole clock on this drive, it doesn't look like, though. Two wides, wide right. Here's McElroy. Deep and incomplete. Kevin Norwood is the intended receiver. No flag. Yeah, the ball was thrown behind. I think it was Earl Anthony that time. Was it Anthony? It no, was that's thrown Kevin behind. Norwood. Oh, Kevin Harwood. Thank you, Vern. Ball was behind. They're not going to call interference on that play. Third and 12. Well, 5.45 to go. The longest field goal made by Alabama this year, 49 yards. That's Cade Foster. Shelley, the other kicker, has made one from 42. They're well outside that range right now. And I'll tell you, they're coming after him. Third and 12, McElroy. Yep. yep. Oh, yep. they got him at the 41 to Sharvin Bell. Yep, off the edge. They were coming after him. With the different receivers in the game, they decided to come after the quarterback. And the quarterback is down. His right shoulder, too, it appears to be. Coming over here, you can see the lineman pointing to him, but he can't get out to him. And slams him. Oh, goodness. And that's a great play by a great call by Ted Roof. He felt the backup receivers were in there. He could match up man to man, and he bought the pressure. Greg McElroy, senior quarterback, Alabama, on the ground. We'll be right back. We are back in uh, Tuscaloosa, where Greg McElroy, the senior Alabama quarterback, remains on the ground. The medical staff paying attention. The family is here. And uh, Greg and Jamie, his mom and dad, have left the stands. And now McElroy being helped into a sitting position. Right shoulder injury, that's pretty obvious. And here was the play. The uh, blitz from the corner to Sharvin Bell got there from the backside. Yeah, now Sharvin Bell's smaller than Greg, and he had to leverage him down. That's a completely legal play that time. Now, I said uh, right shoulder. I, I, I suppose in the replay, they want to prejudge the medical advice. It might be a concussion. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Matter of fact, it looks more like that's what it, does, it is. does, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Well, they take the uh, motorized stretcher off the field, and Greg McElroy is able to walk back almost without assistance. A.J. McCarron is the backup, a redshirt freshman. Uh, McElroy will continue to get assistance. It's fourth down and 16. McElroy, who hit his first 12 passes in this game, is on the bench now, having hit a career high of 374. 
And uh, Auburn very late getting out on the field. Now remember, Alabama substituted, so Auburn has an opportunity to substitute. That's why the official was standing over the ball. Remember if they saw Tennessee LSU. <laughs> And here is the snap. It's Mandel. Oh, he shanked. Oh, he shanked it. He did. Oh, badly. Out of bounds, short of the 25-yard line. Thirteen-yard punt. McElroy getting medical attention. This punt didn't even make a first down, did it? No. Well, this Alabama defense is going to have to step up now. Auburn's got four seniors on the offensive line, and the Alabama defense that couldn't make a play against South Carolina to win it, couldn't make a play against LSU to win it. Can they stop Auburn? 5.18 to go, first and 10. Auburn by one. Eric Smith is the H-back, number 32. Here's Newton, quarterback draw, and he gets one or two. Let's get more on Greg McElroy. Here's Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, he's on the bench right now, and he looks completely out of it, and that's exactly what they were checking for, a concussion, and I think it's safe to say that A.J. McCarron is going to have to finish this game for Alabama, guys. Little uh, worn smile from Greg McElroy. Yeah, if, if he can get back in the game. Remember Auburn's drive against Kentucky. They took off the rest of the clock and kicked the field goal to win it. That was a 19-play drive. And they got a West Byron field goal at the end to win by three. Second down and eight. Ryan Pugh snaps it back. Newton looks for running room. Gets a block in the corner, but he only gets three yards. C.J. Mosley, number 32, the freshman. Up there to make the stop. 420 to go, third and five. And remember, if McCarron plays, at least from the last series, he didn't have Julio Jones and he didn't have Darius Hanks. Third down, 5 4 5 to go. Newton for the day, now 35 yards on 19 carries. He's thrown for 216. He'll take it up the middle. Yes, he did. Inside follows number 32, Eric Smith. And was his knee down before he crossed the line? Time has been taken for the measurement. When you're when you're six six and you're stretching that ball out, yeah. there's a lot of distance between the knee and the ball. <laughs> and remember that play is reviewable. First down plays are short. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> okay, Gus Mal's on on the left. Gene Chiswick. Got a backup quarterback on the other team. And you need four inches to perhaps play for a national championship and stay undefeated. You know he's going to go for it, don't you? He came to Auburn 5-19. and 19. Coach at Iowa State. They booed him when he got off the plane. Some guy called him a loser. Look at this. They go shotgun on this inches. Is it going to be a dive? I mean, over the top for Cam Newton? Five on the shot top. There you play clock. Newton. Oh, he got it. He did. He rolled over the top and got the first down. After almost losing the snap. Oh. Side, right on top of it, gets pushed, rolls across. 2.50 to go. And Alabama, as you can see, only has one timeout. Newton, caught, dropped. 
And they're going to take it, aren't they? Yes, they will. Damien Square, number 92, makes the tackle. I'll tell you that comeback by Auburn down this many points is one of the all timers. Newton appears to be shaken up on the play. Limping a little as he uh, turned and ran back to his left. Yeah, he, he ain't coming out of the game, though. I can guarantee that. We thought his Heisman Trophy run was against LSU. Right. Remember that one from Patrick Peterson? Sure. I'll tell you, his play of the year for me might be that fourth down pass. He found Darvin you talk Adams. about yeah you talk about faith fourth and three or four and he rips a throw and I remember early in the year I don't recall which game it was it might have been LSU he missed the throw and it led to this touchdown later on the same drive talk about faith in your quarterback Julio Jones sitting next to Greg McElroy he went out having returned to kick and was injured on the kickoff return now Newton giving evidence of being in some pain. Second and 12. For the day, 13 of 20. And it was the last play when he got shaken up. Right there. Now, second down, 12. McCaleb around the corner. Mark Barron is there to make sure he doesn't round the corner very far. He tried the same play they hit LSU on the 70-yard speed sweep. Remember, we thought the ball would never leave Cam Newton's hand. And they tried to get outside of it. Wonderful job to the outside that time by Dean Milner. Played off the block and got outside to make the tackle. Third down nine. A one-point game. An undefeated Auburn team. And here comes Alabama. They are coming. They got the bear look. They're coming. Five strong. Delay a game. Delay a game. What did they call Prior timeout? To the delay of game foul. We had a timeout pulled by Auburn. That is their second yeah. charge timeout. They got the timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. Well, I, I keep thinking we thought we might get something exciting. Yeah, we sure did. Well, this one began at 1.30 Central Time. The defending national champs against the undefeated Auburn Tigers in the Iron Bowl. 75th meeting. And it opened with a strong Alabama surge. They scored touchdowns on their first three possessions to go up 21-0. Cam Newton and the Auburn Tigers went three and out the first three times they had it. It was 24-7 at the half. But one of the key plays, and there have been dozens of them, but the second play of the second half. Yeah, the long 71-yard touchdown pass. But I still think the key to the ball down. game, no, oh. for me, the key to the ball game, Alabama three times inside the 10 and get two field goals. Third down and nine. Sweet. Great pursuit. Fourth down. Nico Johnson, number 35, took an angle and flew to the ball carrier. And Auburn will have to punt with about one minute to go in the game, and Alabama will have their backup quarterback in the game. With no timeouts. Marquise Mays inside the 20. Ryan Shoemaker. And... Uh, the punting game has not been a strength of Auburn this year. Mays had an 81-yarder wiped out by a penalty a couple of weeks ago. And this one is whistled dead prior to the snap. Auburn is their third and final timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Well, A.J. McCarron. Yeah, ahead. you remember this highlight of A.J. McCarron went all over the internet. He threw a pass in a game with a big lead, and A.J. got some strong coaching. And a whack on the behind. 
Will he get Julio Jones? Because I see Julio Jones with his helmet on. Julio Jones out the last series for the day. 10 catches, 199 yards. Seven of those catches in the first half. And again and again and again, this is why I feel that the big conferences deserve all tiebreakers and all benefit of the doubt when they play for the national championship. Because the little guys don't have to get over this Alabama hurdle. I'm sorry. On fourth and ten, Ryan Shoemaker to punt. Return is on all the way. Mays comes up, lets it bounce, takes it at the 18 and is downed almost immediately. Emory Blake was the first one down there. Now A.J. McCarron. What did Jim McElwain tell us yesterday? Before A.J. leaves, you will love this guy. Well, he has a chance now to go into the Alabama legendary list. Jones is out there. First and 10, 51 seconds to go. No timeouts, trailing by one. McCarran, deep left side, incomplete. They can't, they did not block Nick Fairley. Nick Fairley went right through his man to the quarterback. Watch him right here, right through him, inside and right into the quarterback. That was the rest year freshman, Anthony Steen. Here's Fairley, and it's second down and 10 from the 19. 46 seconds to go. Deep right side, intercepted. No, oh, it's dropped, I beg your pardon. I thought DeSharvin Bell had it in his hands. Can't get one any easier than that. Trying to throw the ball to Kevin Norwood on the play, and he came and kind of raked the ball across his arms and saved it, it looks like, didn't he? Yeah. Third down. I tell you, if you're the quarterback in your head and, and you just don't know, you just you don't have much time to throw it. That rush is coming. McCarron back, steps up, across the middle, dropped again. Kevin Norwood, number 83. It'll be fourth down and ten. Come back. What a football game. What a conference. What a quarterback Cam Newton is. And he did it against one of the most sophisticated defenses in college football. Fourth and ten. 35 seconds remaining. McCarron. Tip. No flags. Nico Thorpe. Auburn will win. How do you do? Good coverage. Ball to the outside, and I think if he caught it, might even been close to the first down. What a comeback! One for the ages. Considering everything that's going on around this program, Vern, can you really believe the focus this guy's had? How sweet it is. Extraordinary. Again, allegations are still out there. No further developments on his personal story, nor that of his father. And in the face of all of the turmoil, he leads his team from 24 down to a 28-27 victory in the Iron Bowl. Okay. 
Newton, 13 of 20 for 216. He wound up 22 rushes, 39 yards, and a touchdown, and he is our Chick-fil-A player of the game. You see the stats, 39 rushing yards, one rushing touchdown down to Tracy with Gene Chizik. Coach, down 24-0 on the road against Alabama, and this team just continues to fight back. They've done it all season. What can you say about them? Hey, God is good, man. I'm going to tell you, we uh, this team has so much faith. I can't even tell you what this team, it's hard for me to describe it. It's every week, it's every play, it's every game. There's a chemistry here like I've never seen before in my life. It's special. And how about Cam Newton? He struggled early, and then with all the allegations surrounding him, what can you say about him as a leader of this team? This is a solid as a rock guy. I'll go to bat for him 100 out of 100 times. He is the man, and along with the rest of this football team, these guys know how to win, and they're winners. Congratulations on beating your rival. Enjoy it. This has become a familiar scene, has it not? Lee Zimba, his 50th start. Congratulations to him. Cam Newton celebrating with the Auburn fans. They will go into the SEC championship game quiet as mice. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, Fern Lundquist, our entire crowd, good night from Tuscaloosa. CBS Sports presents the Jeep Post Game Show. Just another Friday after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Welcome to the Jeep Post Game Show. Tim Brando in New York. A reminder, tonight on CBS begins with CSI New York, followed by back-to-back -back episodes of Blue Bloods, plus David Letterman after your local news. That's all coming up, only CBS. In the game you just saw, Auburn escapes Tuscaloosa with an incredible 28-27 win. Now we're going to take you out to Tracy Wolfson, who spoke to Lee Zimba of Auburn just moments ago. Congratulations, Lee, for you as a senior and for the rest of these seniors to beat your rival, Alabama, on the road in this fashion. What does that mean? That's unbelievable. I'm just so proud of these guys. Uh, you can see how resilient they are. You know, they never get down. They're always going to battle to the very end. And, uh, and you couldn't ask to be on a, part, a part of a better football team. What was said in that locker room when you went in there down by that much? Uh, one series at a time. That's, all we, that's what was our goal. We couldn't look at the scoreboard. We just had to do our best on each series, and uh, eventually we catch up. For you, an up-and-down career here in Auburn for this team and for the program. So to come away with this victory, where does this one stand? Uh, it's, uh, it's up there. It's up there uh, with, with the best of them. And I'm just, uh, again, I'm so proud of our guys and our coaching staff. It's amazing. Congratulations Thank on you. a tremendous career.